Joining me right now, great pleasure to uh, welcome back uh, the New York Times bestseller John Lascois, uh, celebrating his 20th thriller, and this one is called A Plague of Secrets, and we'll find out all about it, what he's been up to the last uh, year or so since we talked to him. He joins us now uh, by telephone. John, good to talk to you again. How have you been? I've been great, Doug. It's really great to be back on your show. Always good to talk to you, and uh, first of all, congratulations again on, on the uh, success of the previous books. I'm sure this one will be just as successful for you. Is it difficult, you know, when, you, when you've had success before in books, the kind of keep up that level of, of excitement in writing, or how do you how do you approach that? Well, um, it's not hard for me to keep up the excitement. I'm hoping my readers keep up the excitement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, uh, you know, this is what I do, and I'm hoping all these books, uh, they work, and, and I'm, I'm hopeful for this one because, it, well, it's gotten some tremendous, uh, you know, press before it even came out, and then it's, uh, I think it's a pretty good story with all of my characters that people seem to like, so I, I enjoyed putting all of them in as, and, as opposed to Focusing on one person this time, I made it kind of an ensemble effort, and I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah, you bring back uh, Dismas Hardy, right? That's one of your right. most Dave famous Lynch, characters. Wyatt Hunt, Lynch, Dean Wyatt Hunt, Gene uh, Roke, which which makes it great for the reader because they're already familiar with it. It's probably a little bit easier for you in a sense because you don't have to explain as much uh, the backstory, right? They already kind of know these characters. Yeah, well, the the fun thing about it is, I mean, uh, even though I try to make all my books standalone books where you don't have to have read the the previous books, and I right. think this book works on that level. But if you have read the previous books, I know you're going to enjoy it. It's really, it was like a walk down to Old Holm Street um, with uh, Dismas and Abe and Wyatt and Gina and Lou the Greeks and all these very familiar San Francisco spots that uh, I just really had a ball with this book. Now, uh, you make your home out, out west still, right, up, up in that area, and, and a lot of what you write in the book is, is based on, on some real locations, isn't it? Well, I do. Uh, my, my, my rule of thumb is that I if it's going to be a, you know, a really good restaurant, and believe me, San Francisco's got a lot of good restaurants, <laughs> then I use that real restaurant in the book. Um, and then if it's going to be a place that gives you Tomain, <laughs> you eat there, uh, then I make it a made-up place. But the, pretty much the, the, the main star of the made-up places is my restaurant, Lou the Greeks, you know, which is the cop's watering hole. And it's... Uh, pretty fun place to write about. Writing uh, courtroom-type dramas, uh, of course, that is a, a great setting. I guess that and, and, and hospitals are probably the two best dramatic settings to for any kind of writer, but uh, particularly the courtroom, there's so many different ways you could go with it, right? Well, the, I had so much fun with this one because I decided to not just deal with the courtroom drama itself, but the uh, personalities of the lawyers involved in this case. I had had uh, this judge, Marion Braun, she had appeared in a couple of my other books, but pretty much just as the judge, more or less a stick figure. But in this book, I decided to bring her out and, and put her on display. And it turns out, much as to the author's surprise, that this woman and my lead character, Dismas Hardy, just truly, truly, truly hate one another. <laughs> and, and I had so much fun having these people work within the boundaries of the law. You know, they're very constricted onto what they can say and do and everything else. But how they just tried to express their disdain, their utter contempt for one another, <laughs> just became one of the very fun, you know, subplots of the book. I just really enjoyed it. Talking with John Lasquois, author of A Plague of Secrets. And when you write dialogue in a book, uh, how do you approach it? Do you write it physically on paper, or do you kind of talk it out, or how do you uh, how do you imagine the dialogue when, when you write it? Well, down? I start, I, I do everything on computer because I'm a whiz typist. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I used to make my living as a typist. That's right. Yeah. Very, very comfortable. But the way dialogue works, and this is something that's it's, it's obvious once it's said, but a lot of people don't see it. People often comment about how realistic my dialogue is, and I say, yeah, well, that's cool because it's realistic after the tenth time I took a shot at it. <laughs> so what happens is I write my first dialogue, you know, and, and quite often it's flat and uninteresting. But the great thing about writing, especially if you write long-form novels, is that you can fix them for a long time. I mean, you can, you can write a, you know, a dialogue scene in the first pages of your book, and come back two months later and go, aha, I know what this would make, make this so much more interesting. And then you can put in jokes and you can, can you know, play with the people and really do things, not worrying about if you're sacrificing the plot because you know where the plot's going to be going. Yeah, do, you, uh, do you outline your, your plots, say, in maybe 10 well, or 15 pages before you start the book? Well, I send in an outline to Dutton, which is my publisher, because they, uh, that's a payment moment for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So I'm, I'm motivated to send in a, uh, an outline. 
Uh, quite often, though, once I start actually writing the book, the outline gets left in the dust because I write a book from page one to the end. I just write straight through it. And quite often what I thought was a good idea back when I wrote up the outline was something that I hadn't really thought through clearly enough, and so I have to, in the actual writing of it, I go back and make sure that it's going to work. Tom John Lasquois, Plague of Secrets is the name of the book, and I think uh, we may have talked about this last time, but in case some people weren't with us, when, when you write a novel, do sometimes your characters take in a different direction than maybe you thought originally? I know you have that plot outline, but uh, does that ever yeah. happen to you? It happens every single time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I think makes the books good. I had no idea, for example, that Dismas Hardy and, and Marion Braun, the judge, had such hatred for one another until they started trying to interact. And they just hated each other. And I was, I was just enjoying it so much. <laughs> I said, this is just the greatest thing going. I mean, I'm going to keep these guys on the page as long as they're swinging like, like this at each other. And they wound up doing it for a long time, the whole trial. So that's one example. But another example is I didn't know how this book was going to actually end. I, I finally discovered who the bad person was about two-thirds of the way through. But I didn't know how I was going to dramatize it. And when I sat down one day, I was getting, I knew getting to the end of the book. And I said, well, I better get to this ending. How's it going to happen? And I started writing one morning, and I think I wrote 34 pages in one day. I just couldn't keep up. Wow. It was so cool. It was so cool. And it ended just great. I love the ending. Do you have a, a writing time of day, or I guess any time that you need to get something done is a writing time, but do you have a particular favorite time of day where you just sit down and write? Yeah, I, I treat it very much like a regular job. I, I get up in the morning early, I go to work out at a club, and when I'm done with that, I come into the office and I sit down and I write till 5 o'clock at night, every day. It's about five days a week. I it's, it's a discipline, though, isn't it? Any kind of writing. It's a definite discipline. I mean, especially it's kind of mind-boggling to realize I've written 20 books now. And, you know, you don't write 20 books if you don't come in every day and try to put down some pages. So it's, it's, not, it's not like you have to wait till you get in the mood. Because if I had to do that, I think I'd have one book. Because writing in itself is a uh, discipline of uh, procrastination, I know, <laughs> myself, yeah, from what I, mean, I do. Know, I've, got to, I've got to sort my socks today. You That's know, right. Much more important. You know, <laughs> well, you've definitely, uh, you've definitely uh, put your nose to it because, you've, you've, like you said, 20 books, that is quite an accomplishment, and they've, all, and they've all been such great successes. I know this one will be, too. A Plague of Secrets is the name of it. And I guess the best way to uh, get information is to go to your website, John? Or what, what's the best yeah, check way? out my website. It's www.johnless.com. Crow Art, which is how my name is spelled, even though you're pronouncing it perfectly, Doug, after all these years. I took French. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so anyway, it's at my website. You can get me my website, and I, I love hearing from my readers, so please go there and, and write me, and I will respond. I get back to people individually. Great. John, always good to talk to you. I'm sure we'll uh, do it again when uh, I'm sure you're working on another book now, so we'll have you on again when that comes up, but continued success to you. Okay. Thank you so much.